piece of work on, for, the, for the Academy, which will be called Deep Blue Nose. And it will be, my original intention was to make a piece of about an hour or less, a very large scale sound installation, working with Tony to produce you know, a significant ambisonic sound system into which all the, I will you know, create, compose, make a piece of work that represents um, what I've been doing and my interpretation of the sounds of the deep ocean. And that's mainly the large sea mammals. Um, but that, and that ranges from the Arctic to the Antarctic. And so I've been coming along on various academy missions, such as this one, with a very specific intention of going the songs of Sunbite Whale, which will go into the piece. Um, no, but I have a question. Yeah. It is natural that you're recreating the original sounds and you don't manipulate them more, because you said you don't want to mess with the original sound. Well, I, 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 don't, I don't want to... I, I regard it as music. I, I don't discriminate between sounds and music in that sense. No. I regard... I mean, we, we call this song that the animals are singing. What well, I have no intention of, and what really you know, I don't like, is people who try and reinterpret it or create their own music using the songs of humpback whales, you know, which I think trivializes it. You know, the, the original is absolutely good enough. You know, we don't need to fuck about with it or make jazz with it. You know, it's it, it, it's but absolutely. What fine. makes it art then? Why is it art if it's just a recreation of capturing of nature? Because art is actually the opposite. It's the artifice. It's learning from nature and creating something that is your interpretation of nature. Because it's it's making a piece out of it. I will I mean I can't I have to manipulate it in terms of editing it and composing with the sounds. Um, and then, so so you're manipulating it. Yeah there's that's what you're not yeah. But what I'm not doing is no I agree, it's a question of a, a, a sort of definition of degrees. You know, it's my interpretation of it. So there has to be I mean there's manipulation of it as soon as I press to re choose to record record and stop, you know, I select. I don't just chuck the hydrophones in the scene and record. You know, we're selective. Just like the photographer points a lens and is selective, but that's part of the compositional pro process. Mm -hmm. Photography or filmmaking or with sound. Yeah, but the photography that just points a camera doesn't necessarily, I wouldn't consider that art. It's just observation of nature. It's a, and then how it's presented. Yeah. It this can be artistic, but still, the object itself is the art piece. Yes. In this case, it's the sound. Right. But it has to go. The opera. You're the recorder of the opera. Yeah. Or musical variety show. And it has to go somewhere, so it has to be composed. It's, you know, it's, it's of a scale that needs to be composed and presented. It has to be, you know, what. So now you're contradicting yourself because you said the piece itself is so beautiful you don't need some uh, 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 new art, new age artistic interpretation of it because by itself it's so beautiful. So recomposing it is uh, what you said you don't want to do. Well, it's editing it. It has to be how, how otherwise could you present it? Unless you took people out here. And no, but yesterday I overheard you that you said you wanted to leave that one hour in one piece. I'd it's like the beginning and then. Well, that, that's what that's what's challenging me at the moment. That's what, like I was saying, it's a process of education. You know, I'd like now, having heard this, I would make a piece that lasted 24 or 48 hours. You know, if, if you could do that. But then at the end of the day. The way I work, you've got to get people to engage with it, right. otherwise you've wasted your time. You know, so it's no that's what I'm saying, it has to be finite. It has to be something that people come and engage with. So that's what I need to work for. And I've changed my opinion, or I'm changing my opinion. Imagining I was going to make a piece for an hour, that that with humpback whales, that, that's not going to work, because that's not how it is. Which is what I'm learning about. Mm. But so then the two of you are competitors in a way, both dealing with the same subject and you interpret it indifferently. <laughs> yeah, that's the documentary filmmaking. There isn't, there's no competition. No. We do, we do. Yeah, well, I'm quite happy to work in parallel with you on the 
competition. Well, not competition in the sense of uh, which one should I listen to? Because my, uh, my as I'm talking now, very brutal, honest, like a regular guy who goes seldom to galleries, especially even more seldom after my last Biennale in Venice, uh, where I saw nothing but you know installation and art projects that didn't touch me at all. So uh, my patience for going to that kind of events is limited. So if I hear about two projects about the sound of the corals or the whales, in inst both installations, I would choose one of the two in okay. that sense competition. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, one of the things I like about what I do and what we do is a very solitary activity. This is a very unusual situation. You know, coming aboard Dardanella and, and working with other sound recorders. I mean, I regard myself as a sound recorder primarily. And it's a very unusual situation because it's, as I said, it's actually an entirely solitary activity. Nobody else can hear the world like you can at that one moment. And you can't help but put some interpretation on that. So we write notes and things. And so we work with those sounds. I would, I, I never, I don't take other people's material into my work. Um, and I think part of that is, you know, disregarding this idea of ownership. You know, I like being able to follow my work through the process from being listening on headphones. But then I was right, you're a purist. Because uh, if indeed you happen, somebody puts in a microphone like we did the other day and got lucky that there was a particularly uh, excited uh, singer there and we even heard it through the I, I heard it and it's just a question of if it's nature you're capturing sometimes nature is coming to you and you get yes, lucky yeah. and so why not take advantage of it because, because it's it would not lose yours. the integrity of the work yeah well otherwise but the integrity is the whale itself who has the sang his soul out but otherwise, I could just sit, at home. I could sit yeah. at home and download all this information like the and then make a piece from that. That's true. No, I accept that. Another point that Osvaldo made yesterday was interesting because he went around the boat and he listened to all three of your ear earphones, and all three of you were recording the same thing but in a completely <laughs> different way. Yeah, and I noticed that mm -hmm. when I came out with Lim Pascal. Yeah, totally different sounds, as, as well indeed we were getting from our dolphin yeah. you know? Mm. So I think absolutely, I, I, I've seen it, experienced it from the mm. moment go, just the way you are recording something which is within meters, you're yeah. sitting on the boat meters away from each other, and the whale is maybe 100 meters away, or maybe 10 meters away, but it's still, that's not what's making the difference. The difference is how you tune your hydrophone in a way. Well, that's, and well, that's what you mean by distance is really, really important. The distance they are apart. They're, they're all on the directional hydrophones that you guys use, aren't they? So yeah. there's a time difference between the two hydrophones that gives you a sense of spatiality. Yeah. And also, of course, the way that Yana controls hers is she controls the height also, and yeah. also takes them down through the water column. Because there are different sounds at different levels. Yeah. I'm very so a combination of that and, and, and that is actually quite a lot. Quite yeah. So then it is the art of recording. Yeah, yes. yeah. definitely. That's what she was saying. saying. She was saying. No, no, I'm just yeah. trying to understand. Yeah, yeah, well, the more, I mean, the more ex experience, experience you get, the more it then becomes blindingly obvious yeah. when it's good or bad. Yeah. And we've both got enough experience. Like today, there's no point getting onto the water. Because if nothing I could record in these conditions, yeah. it would get close to appearing. Absorb as much of it as one can on a trip like that, and then there's already the process whilst mm. we're together to sort of see it from a completely different perspective. Mm. And I don't see the fact that you might be sitting on the same boat recording the same whale well has, has no, no issue with ownership whatsoever. I don't see that issue. But I think that there are some very traditional ways the art world and other and other creative industries and the sound industry and the music industry has been identifying itself with product, with dissemination, with economy, with you know, <laughs> uh, copyright, with all these things. And this is something that I think Tony 
has, has helped me understand, you know, really that these are no longer valid. I mean, the whole record industry has collapsed. Even now, with the downloads, we, all the composers have realized that they're not even getting a fair slice of all the downloads. That seems to be something that they have to accept, and Spotify is what it is, and become what it is. And the whole way of making recordings and how you want to present them to your audience has changed completely. We shouldn't look at the record industry, the film industry, and the art industry, which no, is, you know, no. as our reference. We're pioneers in the sense of, of re redefining ways of sharing um, art, the artistic process. And I mentioned the word process because that's the thing that interests me the most. That's why I impose myself on your recording sessions that I'm fascinated by that process and what is in fact how you're working and how this develops because it helps me think on how does one really want to present it because of course once you put it into morning line and you have a premiere and you have a festival you aren't playing along with the record music industry's methodology you're saying Yes, this is a finished piece, here it is. It might be distributed amongst uh, 50 speakers instead of uh, being in stereo, but we are doing something different. But you're still sort of going, this is a finished product in a way. And yeah. I'm, I'm more interested in finding ways, moving away from the, the static, staticness of the morning life and finding new ways of presenting these works as a process in different uh, environments. I mean, the ZKM is a perfect experimentation to have the speakers in the, in the lobby there, because that's somehow just something that people are part of, and they appreciate, but it's not sort of like, shut up and listen, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, there are so many different configurations, and, and as we talked about, you know, maybe infiltrate or inf infiltrating the science world, and showing them how, in fact, their process it's nowhere near as at least considered um, and specific. I mean, just overhearing your conversation, I mean, just watching you and, and, and how you're trying to micro-define all these different things far more carefully than, as you say, somebody who's just basically counting whales. That's what Osvaldo does. He comes out here and he counts whales. It's, it's amazing that that's all really that whole whale watching uh, and, 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 and conservation of whales is really all about, isn't it? We used to have 100,000, then we had 20,000, now we've got 50,000. You know, by counting the flukes. I think we're doing something here that's also going to help science. And it's not just going to change the outlook.